Once upon a time, there was a company called Google. They came up with this device called the Galaxy Nexus. And they said, since this is the flagship device, it's going to be pure stock Google and all firmware updates and the like will come directly from Google. They lied. This is 0612TV. Welcome aboard. Hello and welcome to this episode of 0612TV. Today I want to talk to you about the Samsung Galaxy Nexus. In particular, the one I have and what I had to do to actually get it to update. Now, here's the deal. In all advertising, this phone is said to be the pure Google phone. So called the only Android phone to get OS updates directly from Google. Of course, that means you get updates the quickest. For example, if you're on the Samsung Galaxy S3, when the latest OS, Android Jelly Bean, is rolled out, Samsung still needs to take that OS, add their modifications to it, before being able to roll it out to S3 users. And that is exactly what I wanted to avoid when I actually bought the Galaxy Nexus phone. However, here's the catch. By the way, since I'm only working with the GSM HSPA version, I can only speak for that version, I have no idea how the CDMA version works, or whatever other carriers do their stuff. I'm speaking purely for the GSM variant of the phone. Now, here's the deal. Early July, Google announced that the latest Android OS, that is 4.1.1, Android Jelly Bean, is actually ready for download. According to them, this update will be rolled out to all users on the unlocked GSM HSPA variant of the phone, which is the phone I have. However, I never got the update. And well, since this sort of rollouts don't take that long to actually reach phones, I actually had a little bit of a reader, and this is my discovery. The issue here is Yakju versus non Yakju. And you might be wondering what the hell I'm talking about. Here's the explanation. You see, not all Nexus sets were actually installed with the stock Google maintained OS. This build of the operating system, by the way, is actually labeled as Yakju. Now, the issue here is only Yakju sets are directly updated by Google. When I actually dug deeper into my phone, I realized that my phone was running a modified version of Yakju that is Yakju XW. And the issue with that is that that build is actually maintained by Samsung. From what I understand, these slightly modified builds actually contain things like localization things. But the point is, they do take their time in rolling out the updates. Now just a very quick digression, when I speak of updates, I do mean uh, full operating system updates. And the way you actually receive and apply these updates is via what is known as an OTA, or an over the air update. Now, two weeks ago, when my phone was still a Yakju XW set, I had only just received the 4.0.4 OTA. Now, that OTA has been available to Yakju users since March, but it took till June or July for Samsung to actually catch up and release it for the Yakju XW set. And that means that this is going to be really slow if I actually have to wait for Samsung to catch up, which is, back to the original issue, exactly what I wanted to avoid. At this rate, if I stay at Yakju XW, I kinda expect Jelly Bean to come somewhere in September. But nah, I'm not one to wait. So here is how I actually fixed the issue. What I did was I went to the Google repository, I actually found the official 4.0.4 Yakju ROM. What I did then was to actually flash that official Yakju ROM to my phone. Now I actually believe I can flash the 4.1.1 Jelly Bean ROM directly into my phone, but I want it to be safe. So I sort of did a same version flash, technically minimal changes, even though it did actually have to wipe out all the contents on my phone. But the point is, I jumped from 4.0.4 Yakju XW to 4.0.4 Yakju. And by then, well, the Jelly Bean update was totally ready. I simply had to go check for updates, and the update came right in. I had to give it some time to actually download and install the 4.1.1 operating system. But after a bit of setup, it's done. I'm now running Android 4.1.1 Jelly Bean. In case you actually want to try your hand at this, the easiest way to do a lot of these things, despite the fact that it is kind of frowned upon, is to actually use a root toolkit. And if you do own a Samsung Galaxy Nexus, I actually recommend to you the Wux Nexus Toolkit. It allows you to unlock and root your phone, which you need to do before doing any of firmware flashing stuff. And then you're going to have to download a firmware package and then flash it on. 
So, Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. What's new and what's changed? First of all, there were various performance optimizations. Additional animations were also added. It just makes it more intuitive when it comes to switching screens because you can kind of feel where all the screens are moving and I really like that. Probably one of the most noticed updates um, in Android Jelly Bean is what is called Project Butter. This is an effort by the Google engineers to actually make the entire operating system buttery smooth. 60 frames per second transitions all around. Of course, it's very hard to maintain this because there are many running apps, some things may be taking up memory or CPU cycles, but you can really feel the difference. In Jelly Bean running Project Butter, you can really swipe between screens, hop around between apps, and everything is really buttery smooth. Of course, I'm not saying it doesn't slip up. If you are actually doing intensive stuff, sometimes some of the lag is still present, but I say this is a huge boost in performance and a very good gesture. Some of the more notable differences include the new notification area. Everything now has a bit more space. You can actually pinch zoom to actually um, expand some of the notifications right in your notification tray. So you don't actually have to jump to the app. For example, if I receive an email, I can just stretch it out and read it right there. You can also disable notifications from certain applications if you feel like they're spamming you. Another one of the more popular features is Google Now which is said to be similar to Siri on the Apple iPhone series, but of course better performing since it's new and stuff. Personally, I'm really enjoying the Jelly Bean experience. I really appreciate the streamlining of animations. It is a really good gesture aimed at actually making the whole Android experience more enjoyable. Also, Google Now is extremely useful. You can be outside and it'll automatically tell you what the traffic is like and how long it takes to travel home. And I thought, well, that's pretty smart. I also noticed that after the update, memory seems to be managed much better. Things just work faster and will appear more responsive. On the whole, I'm very happy to be updated. It makes an extremely useful device even more useful than before. Despite the minor hiccups I had to go through to actually get Jelly Bean installed on my phone, well, quicker than I'm supposed to be getting it at any rate, the entire process of actually flashing the phone is quite a good learning opportunity. But yes, that concludes today's vlog and the story I've been wanting to tell you. If you actually own a Nexus and you haven't gotten the Jelly Bean OTA, chances are you may not be running the original Yakju build. If you are interested in actually jumping the queue, you can use the steps I've mentioned. I am no expert at this, I'm actually pretty bad at it, but hopefully this will at least give you a head start to your researchers. But that's all there is for today's vlog. As always, if you have any comments, queries or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Before you leave, I appreciate every like, favorite and subscription you give me. But once again, that's all there is for today's video. Until next time, you are watching 0612TV.